was going to read, read from the New King James, but since Rick's got the King James Version up here, we'll just go ahead and read from that, <clears throat> not to confuse anybody. Scripture reading this morning from Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. It's also in your uh, bulletin on the front page if you'd like to follow along with that. It says, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it is pleased, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Certainly good to be with you again. I uh, got to give credit for the lesson topic this morning by Brother Carl. He asked me a question on Wednesday night about eternity and whether I'd heard a lesson about it. So we certainly hear it referenced many times and not really a lesson per se. So that's what we'll be talking about this morning is eternity. And uh, and specifically how, you know, on this, on this earth, we have such a, uh, we don't think about eternity. We think about what we got going on in our, our lives and, and, uh, we don't really have what we call an eternal perspective on things. We're going to talk and notice some th things around eternity, and, and uh, hopefully you'll find some benefit in this. So when you think about eternity, by definition, you can see there the quality or state of being eternal, infinite time lasting throughout eternity. Eternity's plural, age, sense, the state after death, immortality, a seemingly endless or measurable time at an eternity of delays. And so the problem that we find many times in trying to illustrate eternity is because it, it transcends time. It's like saying, I could hear the concern on somebody's face doesn't really relate, does it? Or I could see the trembling in his voice. Those things are disconnected. And so it is with eternity and time. So many times we try to uh, explain to someone what eternity is, and we try to use time as an example, and really it, it totally transcends time. There will be no such thing as time in heaven. It will cease to exist. It is such a prominent part of our lives now. Um, and so when you think about illustrating time, uh, and it cannot be illustrated simply in the passing of seconds or minutes or hours or days, or weeks or months or years, decades, centuries, or even millennia. It just transcends all of that. And yet we know God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. In the, but even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from the beginning to the end. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning to the end. And so it is God's planted this idea in our hearts of eternity. So he put, he's put it in our hearts. And so we, we believe in that, we trust in that, and we look forward to that day when we will have eternity. And in fact, you go all the way back to the beginning uh, in, the, in the garden there, from the very beginning there, the Lord God said, behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Now, lest he reach out his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. 
the idea of, of eternity and man experiencing eternity has been part of God's plan from the very beginning. And luckily for you and I, it still is a big part of God's plan. Eternity is in our in, in God's plan for us. <clears throat> Genesis 2 9 says, And now the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight for that was good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge and good of evil and, and good and evil. The Lord God said, Behold, man has become like one of us. We notice there, it says there that we could that he could live forever. <clears throat> And in, in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 7 says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will grant to eat the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. And so we all recognize, and there are many references to this idea of eternity. And we want and we long for the day when we don't have to worry about growing old. We're running out of time. We long for eternity. And yet when we look at society and we look at what we've, we are focused on as a society, uh, we focus on retirement, don't we? It's a very big part. In fact, this common sense book here, I remember getting that when I was very young. And it talked about things that we need uh, to be aware of. If you want to retire, you start saving early, right? This rule of what they call Rule 72. I don't know if you may hear that or not. Money will divide or double every, take 72, divide it by the interest rate, and that's how many years your money will double then. You know, idea there behind it is you put money in, it keeps doubling over time. Um, I remember him teaching me this concept of compound interest. Or you put a little bit of money aside, put $100 a month aside, and in 70 years, at a 5% rate, you'll have $725,000. If that rate goes up to 10, I'll have 9 million, not over 9,900,000. And if for some reason I'm lucky and I get 12%, I'll have over $29 million in 70 years just by putting $100 a month. Doesn't sound a lot, does it? $100 a month. That's the concept of compound interest. So we, we, we're, we're, we we're taught those things. Also in this book talks about um, emergency funds. You know, there's, uh, I can tell you, as you're, especially when you're first getting married, it seems like there's a lot more emergencies than there are funds. But the idea of setting some money aside just in case, because anybody that's driven a car, and you know what, when you first start now, you're not driving a super nice brand new car, are you? You're driving a car that's, very likely going to break down. And guess what? When it breaks down, you can have money to fix it. And so we call that um, the emergency fund. Uh, retirement accounts. I always talk to our kids, you have retirement accounts, 401k. We put monies into, an, in, into IRAs. It's all important that our 401ks, at, at, you know, at a certain amount, by well, well, the time you come to retire, you've got something to live off of. They tell you to talk to professional investment folks, right? Go out and talk to folks that know things about mutual funds or mutual uh, diversification in our investments in our stocks. And even more recently, this pretty crazy, I call them crazy ideas, but the idea of the Bitcoins and, and these cryptocurrencies, and I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, it's crazy. Um, how many of you know what this picture is that I'm showing here? Anybody know what that is? Actually, I'm surprised. I figured Nathan at least be on top of that. These are what they call the Board Ape, the Board, B-O-R-E-D, Ape Yacht Club. There are 10,000 of these board apes out there. They all have different images. Every one of them is worth a certain amount of money, and you can buy those. It's like they call it crypto. You know, it's a little bit like the Bitcoin, but a little bit different version of this. You can buy one of these. Um, the cheapest one you can buy is two hundred eight thousand dollars. It's insanity to me, but there's a lot of young people grasped on that. It started off with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency was a great concept, where if I'm buying something or I'm trading something with somebody that's in Europe. 
uh, they're dealing in euros, I'm dealing in dollars. So let's just come up with a common coin, currency that we both can work on. It doesn't depend on what's going on with the US government or the European economic well-being. It's just a generic currency. That was a great concept, but it has grown into so much more than that today. So we, we spent all this time saving and focusing on having enough money in our savings so that we can retire, right? We can retire. Just get to Social Security. Just get to that age where Social Security starts kicking in and start providing. You can see the rough years there. If you're depending on what year you're born, it tells you when you're eligible to collect Social Security and you can grab that earlier, or you can wait till you get the full amount. And we spend all our lives saving for retirement. That's right, folks. We all work to retire. It's about accumulating wealth so we can retire. So then we can do what? Travel the world, play golf, spoil grandchildren, live a good life. You look at how much time that is, actually. In fact, Jamie talked about the example, of, and I almost did this, of you take a, a rope and you think about eternity relative to the time we're here on earth. And even shrink that down to even living further, how short retirement actually is. It's a very, very small amount of time. We spend our lives saving for that. In fact, we, we, we spend our, our, our lives working on things like so that we, we retire, we have a new car, we can eat this really nice food and just enjoy every, uh, the, the beautiful views and countryside and go travel the world. And you know what? This is exactly what the God of this world wants you to believe. It says, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. That's what the devil wants you to believe. We, got, we need to focus on these temporal things. He wants us to focus on the good things in life. To focus on these uncertain riches. Get caught up in the new cool things of this world. Television, the internet, cell phones. There's a big one. Psalms 52, 7 says, Behold the man who would not make God his refuge, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and was strong in his evil desires. Satan's goal is to get you to not focus on eternity. That's his objective. My goal in this lesson is to have you focus on eternity. You know, it's probably very likely that some of you are going to grab that cell phone out and check the time on me at least once, maybe usually toward the end of the lesson. We're so driven by time. We have so many things we got to get done. But you know what? The one thing that with eternity and one concept, you don't have to worry about time. There is no such thing as time and eternity. Days come and go and joy or woe. Days go and come and endless sum. Only the eternal day shall come but never go. Only the eternal tide shall never ebb, but flow. Oh, long eternity, my soul goes forth to thee. Can you explain eternity to me? The saying is, I could, but it'd take me forever. Cannot use time to illustrate what eternity is. You know, on average, on average right now, Americans check their phones 262 times a day. It's amazing, isn't it? Over 260 times a day on average. That's once every five and a half minutes. Not, not every time you're looking at the time, but many times to see what time it is, right? Check our phones constantly. Time is constantly there. It's ticking away, but we need to focus on eternity. You know, when Carl was talking to me Wednesday night, he says, he, he always asks me some of these questions that, that make you think and ponder. He said, what, etern what is eternity, Rick? But you know, he answered me. He did give me an answer. And the answer he gave me was correct. And that's what I want to share with you this morning. 
eternity is Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. You want to know what eternity is? Plain and simply, it's Jesus Christ. He is eternity for you and he's eternity for me. We have to believe in him. We have to put our trust in him and not in the uncertain riches of this world. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me or by me. John 14, 1, 3, Jesus describes heaven as a real place where he will live with his disciples. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. Um, it says, if, 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 uh, if it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me again. Where I am, there you may be also. Jesus wants us to be with him in eternity. Jesus Christ is eternity. He has an eternal home prepared for us. John 1.13 says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. It says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus, our Savior, came to this earth. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. <laughs> he, and even you go back to, we talked about dwelling among us 2,000 years ago. We call this his incarnation. He's the divine person. He's existed for eternity's past. He was called the word. In the second part, he's part of the Holy Trinity. The Apostle John wrote, the word was, was with God and the word was God. He was with God the Father through all eternity's past. In the beginning, he already was. We know his earthly God-given name is Jesus. Jesus is eternity. Jesus is also going to give us and desires us become eternal. But you know what? These, these bodies are not made for eternal existence. They just will not hold up. Anybody that's been here for any time knows the bodies are, they're, they're given away. They're not as strong as they used to be. Can't run as fast as we used to. There's things that we used to, to do that we talk about saving money for retirement. By the time you get ready to retire, you can't do those things you wanted to do. But Jesus is going to give us a new body. Our citizenship is in heaven, and from it, we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body. We're going to be given new bodies. You know what? These bodies are not going to fail. They're going to be eternal. Nobody can go to heaven today apart without faith in Jesus. You're just not going to make it. You're not going to see eternity without faith in Jesus, having belief in him. John 8, 24. I said, therefore, unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. You've got to have a faith in Jesus. John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but, but by me. The only way to make it to eternity and to make it to God is through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world, we noticed earlier, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We've got to believe in Jesus, have faith in him. Matthew 20, 28, even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So nobody can go to heaven today apart from faith in Jesus. I don't care how good a person they are. I don't care what they've done in this life. If they've not had faith in Jesus and believed in him and committed their life to him, they're not going to see eternity. It just is not going to happen. You know, I don't care how sincere someone is. I mean, we've all run across people who are sincere in their faith and their belief. But you know, sincerity is not enough. Having a sincere heart is not going to be enough to, to see eternity. Matthew 7 and 21 says, 
Not everyone saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many in that day will say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in iniquity. It doesn't matter how sincere we are. We've got to do. We can't just believe in Jesus. We have to, we have to be obedient to him. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 8 and 32. We've got to worship Jesus according to the way he wants to be worshipped and follow him in the way he's instructed. We can't do it the way we want to do it if we want to reap his eternal reward. Matthew 7, 13. Enter ye at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Many people are going to be sincere in their faith and their belief. You know what? They're not going to see eternity. Because they didn't listen to Jesus. 1 Samuel 15, 22 says, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. He's saying there, I, what that's saying is, I don't care how uh, sincere you are, how hard you work and how committed you are. It has to be done according to the truth, the way the Lord wants it done. We talked about the temple in our class and how precise they had to follow God's instructions. God asked them for things a certain way, and that's the way they have to be done. And there's no, and we're in no position to question why or to ask why. We have got sincerity is not going to be a substitute for eternity. And baptism is essential. You're not going to make it to heaven. You're not going to see eternity without baptism and your commitment and obedience to Jesus through baptism. John 3, and, uh, verse 3 says, Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. He cannot, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb? And be born, and Jesus answered, said, Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. I don't care how good a person is. If they don't commit their life to Jesus, have a faith in him, and are not buried with him in baptism, Jesus says there, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That is the only way we can see eternity, is through baptism with Jesus Christ. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth, and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And so if we want to see eternity, we've got to have a faith in Jesus and we have to be baptized. We must also worship him acceptably. A lot of folks would contend it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. That we can just offer up any, cold, any kind of worship as long as that worship's directed to God, it's, it's okay. And it's acceptable. John 4 and 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must, it's not an option, must worship him in spirit and in truth. And that truth is extremely important, not just that, I, that I'm doing it with the right heart and the right attitude, and, and we, we need to do that, because we can get the truth right and not do it with the right spirit and be just as guilty. We've got to have both. But if we want to see eternity, we must worship him acceptably. And so I ask you this morning, do you want to spend eternity with God? Do you want to live in a place where I don't have to look at that watch anymore, see what time it is? Wouldn't that be nice? Guess what? I don't worry about time. I don't worry about getting old either. I don't worry about getting sick. I don't worry about loved ones dying. Feeling heartbroken when I see things, we see things happen. I don't worry about that anymore. And so do you want to spend eternity with God? Do you want to experience that? In Matthew chapter 25, verses 31, it says, When the man, son of man, shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. 
And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. He shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw thee a hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty? gave thee drink. When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall say and answer unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto the one of the least of these, my brother, ye have done it unto me. And so if you want to spend eternity with God, he says, come, ye bless my father, heir the kingdom, prepared from you from the foundation of the world. It's been God's plan from the very beginning that we spend eternity with him in heaven. But not everyone, unfortunately, are going to experience what a true eternity is. They're not going to experience this eternity with God. But as we notice in these verses, eternity with God, we're going to be, it's, it's, it's a home with God. We're going to be with God forevermore. What a blessing. What a glory. It's a place he's prepared for us. And I've talked about as beautiful as this world may seem and as nice and as much fun as we may enjoy with some of these things that we experience in this life, they're not going to compare it with what happens. Like he's prepared this place that we cannot fathom, we cannot describe. Words cannot describe. It. But it is a prepared place. And my final question to you, are you ready for the Lord's return? Are you ready? The Lord comes today. Are we ready? If you want to spend eternity and you want to experience eternity, eternity is Jesus Christ. And the only way to have access to eternity is through him. You get out your song books and turn to the song of invitation. What will your answer be? It's a very good question. When the Lord comes, are you ready? Are we prepared? Do you want to spend eternity with him? It's very simply put. If you, want to, if you want access to eternity, believe in Jesus. Follow him. Be baptized into him. Commit your life to him. Live your life faithful to the point you take your last breath. And you'll experience eternity forevermore. If you're subject to the Lord's invitation, we can help you. Please come while together we stand and while we sing.